Well, I could be a witness to what you said. 15 years ago, can you imagine I had all those major diseases by eating healthy and losing the weight? They all went away, all went away. I was on all the medications too, so I can witness to that. Really have a good topic today, directly related to our addiction. If you look in the lobby, it was our obsession with food and our thoughts. We are not our thoughts. So anyway, let me relay this to you. Um, I had, some people would talk about our addictions to food. and I mean, it could be compulsion towards overeating, it could be compulsion towards not eating. It's all different, but it's still a compulsion in our thoughts. It has to do all with our thinking. So one person sent me a thing saying the obsession lingers. So here we go. The whole thing is when we start to realize, and, that, and in the lobby it said, we are not our, we are not our thoughts. Okay? We can have all kinds of thoughts, and it's related to the food and other things in life. And another person I work with this week said, you know, it, they, they're doing great at work. Everything's working out, the relationships, but they just can't get it with the food. It's all the same thing. These thoughts we have about our addiction to food are related. And a lot of us have success, especially some of us are here from AA and narcotics and alcohol addiction. And then we, we had a people addiction. And a lot of people say, I got straightened out with all of this, but I don't understand the relationship with the food. Well, it has everything to do with it. And when those thoughts come, just like if you get a thought about resentment, the same thing with the addiction to food. When we get these thoughts, we don't have to believe them. Remember the falseness of them. Remember where they came from. The advertisements on TV. And, and again, we, we eat a lot more food than we did years ago in this country. And the people are 30, 40 pounds more overweight. It all has to do with the thinking. And, and also I had on there the abstinence tastes better or feels better than food. The whole thing is when we replace it with spiritual, and I always use the word spiritual bread. So when we have these thoughts, it's okay. Become friends with them. And again, I always say the diets don't work because you're resisting it. On a diet, you're saying, I have to have this much food because I really want that much food. So when we have a spiritual diet and, and we, our thinking changes, then the whole we have a spiritual awakening towards our addiction and everything in life. The food is exactly the same thing. But one thing I can tell you is this, that it brings people closer, much closer to the steps. And that's what the blessing is. And some people say, I'm a grateful in, when they're an overeater, an anonymous compulsive overeater, because it really, really, you need those steps. But it, the step says everything, right? What does the step say? Step one said, we're powerless. And we had, to, you know, we had to restore to sanity. And how do we do that? By thinking of spiritual things. Again, spiritual bread, getting our nourishment from feeling the vibrations of the universe. Because when we're in, feel, in the food or we're in any addiction, whether it's alcohol, drugs, and we speak about all types of addictions, we'll be finite and isolated. And all we're thinking about is the material thing, things of the flesh. So the obsessions are okay. The, the thoughts are okay. It's what we do with them. If you like the video and want to spread the message, press the like and subscribe button. Thank you. It's how we react, understanding that these thoughts really were put into our brain. But we could change our thinking. Why not think spiritual things like our body's God's temple? Instead of thinking you need all of this food and that full feeling, meditate on this. Think about being lean and, and empty and, and, you know, and just having that lean feeling in your stomach. It doesn't matter where you are right now. You can, and another thing too is when these thoughts come, we can start what called the day over. And the other person I spoke to uh, uh, who I'm working with on this said, well, the, other, the whole week they were binging. And I said, are you binging right now? What does it have to do with the present? And these thoughts, when they come to you, and I also asked on those days that were binging, I said, how was the rest of the day? They said I had an abstinent breakfast and lunch and everything was good, but later in the day, they succumbed to certain things. So I said, most of your day was good and you had that positive thinking. And I said, how did you feel about eating abstinence? They said, it was great and I didn't want the obsession. Well, if you could think for a moment right now that you don't have that obsession, then you could think more and more that way, right? Once you have that thinking change, just keep on applying it more and more during the day. And the next day you could say, well, maybe more than half of the day I was thinking that way, or for one meal I thought that way. So when we can do it once, we could do it twice, we could do it a hundred times until it becomes a working of the mind. And it says in here, it just becomes, in the 10-step promises, is a working part of the mind. 
And what's really interesting, the whole thing I'm saying has to do directly with what, when Roland Hazard on page 27, it's directly related to our addictions in life. It, it, and he said, uh, Roland, you know, after Roland Hazard went back to see Dr. Young, and Dr. Young really, I think, did psychoanalysis with him because Roland Hazard said, I understood the mainsprings of the mind. So we can have all this understanding. And I said, I heard a lecture on the internet where they had all of these famous nutritionists, doctors, and scientists talking about the food addiction. And they had everything you could possibly talk about. All the morals and philosophies of life. It says that in the big book. We could have a great understanding about all the, the moral and philosophy of life, but it does us no good. The one word they didn't put in there was spiritual. We need that spiritual awakening, perception change. We always talk about the new pair of glasses. That was the one thing that they were missing. I, haven't, I didn't hear one word about that. It was all trying to control it. And if we go to our step, step one says we can't control it. And when we try to, every time it fails because we needed a different consciousness. How could the crazy mind that created the problem cure it? So the whole thing is this. Become friends with these feelings and emotions. Understand them and replace them with, with saying to yourself, I don't want those poisonous, gloopy foods. I want God's gifts, natural, wholesome food, and their thinking change and perception change. But we can't, we can't control it and we can't fight it or resist it. What we can do is have what's called, and in this program with our relationship with people, or whatever it is, we have love, tolerance, and patience that comes into our heart. And God will come into you and give you intuitively, you'll know the right things to do. Your brain knows the answers are already in there, but we buried it with the ego saying, I need what the commercials on TV tell me. I need all of this food that's been corrupting my palate and my brain, but is really false. Again, the truth will set you free. So don't get upset. Don't get discouraged. And, you know, and a lot of people, I mean, another person I was at a meeting, sometimes they're in 20, 30 years. And they finally came, they said, and this is an Ovidus Anonymous meeting, they said, look, it's really not about the food. It's my relationship with people and all it is. Not realizing that if they applied the same thing in the, that they did with other parts of their life, you know, they do like a lot of people do, it's a 10-step inventory and they have sheets of paper and they write all these things down. But the thing is, is that sometimes that's good, but then the thing about it is this, if we feel we shouldn't be that way, so sometimes in my inventory, is all, and I'll write a, I won't write a list and I'll say it's all about the God consciousness, God within, I was creating God's image. So with the food, it's all the thinking change, the processing change, not saying, well, I'll have certain vegetables, I'll have this, I'll have that, I'll weigh this, I'll measure this, I won't have this, I will have that. I'm not saying that knowledge is good to know, because you got to know all of these po foods, most of them in the supermarket and the restaurants are poisonous. They just are. They have poisonous chemicals in them and all kinds of hydrogenated and calories are tremendous and it's salt, oil and sugar, SOS. SOS, which is when a ship goes down in the ocean, you know, it, it's a distress signal. signal. So that's the, the anachronym there, SOS, right? Salt, oil, and sugar. So the perception is, and then after a while, uh, it becomes automatic. We don't have to fight it anymore. We don't have to swear it off. It's a change of thinking, just like we have with, and people say a lot of times they work the steps, the relationship with people are getting better, and their family, and at work, and everything, and they're, it's the same thing. It's a, you know, it could be educational variety. But we do have moments of spiritual awakening. The spiritual awakening is knowing the truth. Well, the truth to me was that I couldn't fight it anymore. And that's the whole steps in the whole program was there. And that to me was a spiritual awakening, whether it was people. But I didn't realize for a long time the direct relationship to food. I didn't realize even now when I, when relationship with people, if someday I get angry, resentful, that's okay. It's what I do with it. It's when I could get angry and say to somebody, you shouldn't have said this and yell at them. But if the next moment I could sit there and think about it and just sit there and smile and realize, what does it all mean? What people say, think, or do. What does it all mean in your brain with all of these things with the food? It means nothing. So we can't, but when we resist it, it's the resistance. It's trying the diet, the diet, the diet. No, have knowledge of healthy foods. God's given foods. And the, what, you want to know the secret to that is God's given food has one ingredient in it. Right? The other ingredients are what's giving you the problem, no matter what you eat. Now, I eat whole food, plant based. That's what I eat. All that I feel that's just the way, and it made me very healthy. But I wanted to, don't want to discourage anything. The first thing you have to do, no matter what type of diet you have, low carb, high carb, whatever you want to call it, 
uh, you know, the thing is, it's what you're putting on the food that's the problem. That's where all the calories come, and you're getting addicted to the addiction. So the real tw uh, drug addiction, and this is the food addiction, and, and it's amazing how we need a period of detox too. Just like somebody says on heroin, they, you know, think of it, they have to lay down, and they're sick, and they can't take, you know, take a few days to get out of your system. If you like the video and want to spread the message, press the like and subscribe button. Thank you. Realize that too. Realize the physical reality of the addiction. But after that time or even before, we can't control it. We can't fight it all back to the steps. But we can replace it with a God's presence. And again, God, when you're really centered, the mind knows. How do some people keep to one pound of weight and eat normally? Because they didn't, they didn't, the ego didn't come in and corrupt their mind. But we, and 75% of this country, got brainwashed. So we need a new brainwashing with God consciousness, spiritual bread, and go out there and enjoy and get our happiness and joy from things of nature. And, and do you realize you're, you're, you're stealing all of that away from yourself, the joy? You go to a, an affair or a meeting somewhere and you're just thinking about the food or party. You, you're, you're, you come home and during the day, wherever you are, you would close the shades and sit there and drink in one hand and food in the other. You know, it could be drugs, alcohols, and, uh, and, the, and the food. I mean, it's, it's the insanity. Step two, how to be restored to sanity. It's all in these steps. Step two, I had to realize insane, insane thinking. When somebody says they have an obsession, the obsession lingers or whatever it is, so long as you understand the insanity of it and understand that it's truth, you don't... See, that's the beauty of steps. I talked about one, two, and three. But four is the defect of character, the ego says, I got a great idea. I need things of lust or I need, you know, gluttony. And this seven deadly sins, which Bill wrote about. And then five, we cast it out. We, we talk about it. But then we don't do anything about it. What is six and seven all about, right? It's willingness, but will God, our higher conscience will do it. Again, that's why 99% of diets fail because we're trying to do it. We're trying to control it. You know, how can our best thinking that got us in a situation uh, fix it? So you want a solution. You want to get out of self. Again, I bring up the water if I have it here. And uh, it's the same thing here. This is God's gift. I don't have to resist anything anymore. Most of, a lot of our people here get calories from the drinks, which are sometimes those goopy drinks with 1,200, could have 1,200 calories in them. And also the same with the sauces, the oil, the fried foods. But I want God's gift. Whatever I eat, I don't want, you know, all of that stuff I have. I get a, what I buy is a package. And actually, I brought it here this time. I usually don't. This is called the uh, Ready Veggies. Here's a whole, it's three quarters of pounds. The whole thing, it says it's, it's um, 35 pounds, uh, 35 calories per, and it's four servings. It's about 150 calories in a whole, it's a whole big bag when it's filled up. You know, it's, it's amazing. And then the taste of it, it has in it, um, Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, kale, carrots, snow peas. You know how delicious carrots taste when you educate the palate and get rid of all the junk? You wouldn't have it any way. I mean, you could put a light dressing on and stuff like that. I don't usually get in this much detail with the, with the food, but this is God-given, grown from the ground. And again, no matter what food you eat or whatever it is, really each one is one ingredient. What I, you know, it's, it's really all wholesome food, and, and uh, that's my brain. The change, the obsession. I have an obsession towards this now. I won't have it any other way. How did I get that? Spiritual waking, working these steps. When I started to realize the insanity of my thinking before, I don't want to sit here and have a big plate of, I don't know what the heck it is, in the restaurants, the salt, oil, and sugar, and, and all of that stuff. You know, now my palate is educated. When I drink, when I eat anything with oil in it, it tastes like motor oil from a car, like I just had a whole can of motor oil. It just, it's just it repulses me now because... It's not God-given. You know, when you're a really small little child, they, they, they spit this stuff out. They want the water usually. They want the vegetables. But even the formulas now for the children, they have all this. They start with sugar in them and all of that junk in them. And I, I, I you know, just to where to go with this. So the whole thing is, is that the solution we have, it's applying these principles, the 12-step, directly related to the food. The alcohol and the drugs sometimes is easier. We have to eat three times a day. We put the cork in the bottle, right? So we put the cork in the bottle. And unless we have that, again, 
and this obsession will come back. We do have what's called alcoholic foods that we want to stay away from. And it's the same with the alcohol. Alcoholic foods are, are, are the unnatural processed foods, believe me when I tell you that. That's what they have in them. The scientists and psychologists purposely put in them chemicals that go into the hypothalamus, release endorphins and all of this stuff in the, you know, the, these places, all they put in it when they, they make their processes is sugar, tons of sugar, tons of oil, uh, tons of, I don't know, they put butter in there, all kinds of stuff when they make a pastry, whatever it is. Those aren't wholesome and natural. Those are processed, meaning that processed foods means they put extras in it, but it also means they condense it. When you have oil, some people say, well, there's natural oil in, in foods or whatever, but it's condensed. When we have a one tablespoon, when they condense it and process it, it's 150 calories. One tablespoon is that whole bag I showed you, which is really pretty big. This is the empty bag. The big bag is full. This is 150 calories. One, so when it goes in your stomach, this fills up your stomach. But not only that, that oil is not healthy. It clogs up your arteries, oil, that's saturated fat and all of that. When you have this, this fiber and everything, you know, food actually heals the body. You know, there's a whole thing, and you don't get that from the mainstream because a lot of our things are, are delegated by the big corporations who are on the major food corporations for the FDA, you know, I mean, the, the, the food corporation for the government. They're all like, either they, they came from the corporations, they know when they leave they're going to go to corporations. So they have to toe in line with all the, the, the way they want to do it. And you go and it's a big lie. It's all big lie. So, you know, you, it's, the thinking isn't our thoughts. Our crazy thinking and most of us in this society here in this culture, it's all insanity. So just if we know the truth about it, like we're I'm talking about here, and, and relax and don't try to fight it, God will do the rest. It'll be maybe over time, but each day you get the feeling of this is the answer right here, okay? This is the clarity. Start thinking it, start tasting it. When you eat the healthy foods, you start to taste the amazingness of them. You won't want it any other way. So again, when you get all these thoughts, don't fight them and realize we have a solution here to all our problems. It definitely is in the steps and you could have it a momentary, but you know, you don't have to wait all these years and it could be processed as educational variety. And each, if during the whole week, if I, somebody, if you ha could say to yourself, well, I had two more days where instead of having a soda or something, I had water, or I had a day where I had fresh vegetables and it really started to taste good. But the problem is in the alcoholic foods, when we do start to ingest those others, they do clog up our, our palate. So I don't even want to go there because I know it's like a, what's called an alcoholic food, and I know the obsession of mine may come in, but I also know physically what it does. It makes us sick. It, it can't, we can't function properly. The, the, it wasn't made for these processed and foods from today. And again, all the scientists and doctors, you know, I said I watched it on the Internet. They didn't have the solution. When Dr. Silkworth said they couldn't cure the alcoholic, there was only one solution, a spiritual solution. Today, how many years later, we went to the moon, everything we've done, major scientific advantages. Let me know if anybody here knows of any scientific thing that has helped them help people cure the food addiction. I haven't seen it yet. If you like the video and want to spread the message, press the like and subscribe button. Thank you. Okay, you know, I, I didn't read what, on, I said page 27, what Roland Hazard went through. So Roland Hazard, finally, um, Dr. Young said, he said, once in a while, this is directly related to everything I was saying, alcoholics, and you could say food addicted people, what are drug addicted people, people addicted people have had what we called vital spiritual experiences. To these, these occurrences are, occurrences are phenomenon. No. They appear to be in the nature of huge emotional displacements and rearrangements. That's what we need, that huge emotional rearrangement. And real, but first, just realizing, and, and God will do the rest. Ideas and emotions and attitudes which once the guiding force of the lives of these men are suddenly cast to one side, and a completely new set of conceptions and motives begin to dominate them. To dominate them. And we had the phrase, and, and I had in the intro, abstinence tastes better than food. That's the perception change. Our idea is, again, we were lied to by the corporations. But the real joy and happiness comes. We needed that perception change. And it tastes better. You know, uh, abstinence tastes better than food or feels better than food. So that's the perception change. 
Okay, I'll answer. I was wasn't me. Okay, I'll answer that quickly. First of all, I really don't cook anything elaborate because everything I have is one ingredient. Even with the vegetables, I may steam them. Whatever it is, I have, you know, whole grain stuff. I'll have maybe rice, potatoes, and stuff. And I I don't put anything really on them. Maybe a little hot sauce, something like that. And then you're asking about the oil. The oil is processed. If it's processed, if it comes natural in like a avocado plant or something like that, or even other sources that other people eat foods, that's fine. But when we fry it or when we put it in process, it's called, they, they squeeze it out. There's no fiber in it. There's nothing left. It's just the oil itself, and, that, and that's no nutrients there. So that, that's I stay away from that. But also, what I want, it, want is everybody else, to, if anybody else has an idea on what. But great. It's really great that you asked those questions. So.